announcement. <laughs> Throughout the session, please show acknowledgement with thumbs up or down, you know, use your, use, be physical as much as possible in this virtual environment. And of course, if you have questions, please type them into the chat and stay muted throughout the session. Um, if you wish to speak towards the very end of the session, if we have a little bit of time during that Q&A, you can unmute yourself then and you know, raise your hand for us to, to pick you out amongst the crowd. And um, during the session, please select speaker view. So in the top right-hand corner, usually you can select how you see people. And when you select speaker view, you'll see the actual person that's speaking. That's quite helpful for this session. And as I said before, do have a pen and paper at hand because we have a little exercise in a second. Now, when it comes to the agenda, we'll begin with Guy giving us a little brief overview of the GDS Academy. What is it about? What are the different formats? And how can we get involved? Yeah. Then we'll have a little conversational interview, which will be led by Guy and also Senthil Gopina, the CEO of ICA, Petra Stuchek, the president of the board of ECM. And then we'll move into the masterclasses, which are one of the formats that the GDS Academy will take. And we have three delivery partners here that will share a little bit more about their masterclass that we co-created with them. The first will be Graham Jackson, the head of partnerships at the Travel Foundation. The second will be Genevieve Leclerc from Meet for Impact. And the last will be Melissa Baird, one of the change makers of the GDS movement. Now the Q&A that I sort of mentioned here at the end, there will also be another one just after the conversational interview with Guy Center and Petra. And yeah, fingers crossed we get to that last one so that we can actually close on time at eight Central European time. All right, so I'm really excited to yeah, hear Guy and the rest of the team here present. And I hope you are too. So without any further ado, Guy, over to you. Fantastic, fantastic. Great. Well, I'm delighted to, to be here today. And I thought I'd start with a, a little a little story, really. Um, once upon a time, a long, long time ago, I was on a plane. You remember when we used to do that? We used to fly around the world. And I was flying from Cape Town to, to Joburg. And I was sitting on, a, on, on this plane. I think it was about 2014, I think. And uh, I was talking to this guy next to me who, who ran a big social charity in, in South Africa, very impactful program. And um, he said, what do you do? And I said, well, you know, I consult to organizations and, and really starting to work a lot with destinations. And, you know, I've got this, this kind of this program and we, we, we're, we're starting to you know, work a lot with destinations and help them develop their sustainability strategies and what we've realized is that every kind of city does something amazing, you know, amazing piece of work, socially, economically, or environmentally. Every city does something amazing. And I had this kind of dream to bring these cities together and start to really help them collect data, report on it, benchmark it, and, and then get better strategies, using data to get better strategies. And he said, he, um, he turned to me and he said, you know what, what's, you know, what sounds key to that is that it's about education, isn't it? You, you need to be thinking how we, how we share knowledge and really build up and educate people. I said, you know, yeah, that's a good idea. Really should think about having some type of academy. Well, that's my dream. You know, one day we'll have an academy. Well, six years, seven years on from that, we, we now you know, have 72 destinations working in the global destination sustainability movement. Uh, 72 destinations, benchmarking, using data, working very consciously forward to create better sustainability and regenerative tourism and event strategies. And the next step has come. You know, that next step now is, is to launch the Academy. And this is, this is a really exciting part of our journey as an organization and really a part of the journey of all the 72 people that we're working with and the partners that made this reality. So still the index and the benchmarking that we do is core to this, but we have learned that the data we get from the index and all those stories is invaluable. And now by building the frameworks and the methodologies on top of that data and then sharing it and then using and unlocking that collective intelligence of, of, of destinations, we can really 
catalyze a better future. We can build back better. We can make more flourishing and resilient places to visit, meet and live in. And that's really where we are today, you know. So by the launch of this academy, our, our purpose, our vision is how can we help capitalize a regenerative future? How can we generate social impact? So as I said, we want to, and you'll hear more about this, how we take learning, turn it into frameworks, then use those frameworks and build collaboration, and then really upskill or reskill both the DMOs and your teams, and then the supply chains that exist in your destinations. How do we change mindsets, up skill sets, and give new tool sets? And also, if we do that, we build the capacity we need for tomorrow. We know tomorrow is different. Our sector has changed, has transformed, and I, don't, I believe we haven't seen anything yet. I think change is going to happen much faster and quicker than we've ever imagined. And we have to be more agile, more resilient, more brilliant than ever. And so we want to unlock and use design thinking processes, sharing, co-creation to make those skills for tomorrow. And so the vision of the, the academy is not only to create some good courses, but to create extraordinary learning experiences. We really want to excel as a learning platform, how we teach and facilitate growth. So the courses we'll explain to you in a second are designed for DMO professionals. So the people of you work in DMOs, from CEOs down to the, the junior staff, and they're for the organizations that you guys serve. So they're for the municipalities. They are for the your hotel partners, your event partners, your tourism partners. And so we want to create programs that destinations can roll out. So we make your life easier as a destination. The platform and our concepts is, is a blended learning experience. So we don't want this to be a on-demand pre-recorded education program. There's lots of those that exist and some of them are very good, but we believe in the work we do around transformation and creating impact that that doesn't work. It has to be a much more interactive learning experience where we learn from gurus on stage and there may there will be some pre-recorded videos. But key also is the discussion, is the collaboration, is the co-creation that we will enable. And that we've learned is, is how best you learn and then create the change. Underpinning the technology and the approach and the process is the faculty. So we have got some of the most amazing experts in sustainable and re regenerative tourism. We're bringing experts in from other industries to share their knowledge of how other industries are transforming. I think we can learn a lot from other industries that are ahead of us, perhaps. And then, of course, and perhaps maybe even the most important, is the destinations that are part of the movement and bringing in other destinations. As I said before, I think every destination does something excellent. And if we take one thing from every destination, we bring that together, we've already got mind-blowing learning and knowledge. So that's what we're doing. So let me explain the kind of two key formats that we have. Um, so the first kind of format, which I guess you would call it, is the certificate program. So this is a kind of wide education program. It's a four month, 16 week program where it's designed for mid to senior level management teams and DMOs. And we wanna give you the skills uh, to be our destinations to create regenerative tourism and event strategies. So it goes through over these four months, 10 different modules from how from the basics of regeneration and the theory behind regenerative thinking through to leading for the future and leadership skills and how you transform systems. Remembering that we live in a system and we work in systems through to impact strategy. So some of the people you'll hear from next who, who have uh, the masterclasses also will participate in these modules. So we go through everything from stakeholder engagement and what we call democracy, democracy, and how we engage with residents and co-create through how do we roll out certification programs for destination and education programs? How do we catalyze innovation and startups around technology? 
How do we uh, rethink tourism uh, funding and taxing systems? How do we rethink event management in the destination? And then as you hear a little bit later, how do we tell the stories that create and inspire the change? So the certificate program is, is some amazing content, some amazing people are gonna be teaching on this. Um, and then we bring it all together with a, a, a group project or group projects um, where people have to take the theory and turn it into practice for their own destination. And then we will kind of peer review and work on that together. So that's one area. Okay, so that's an open enrollment program. People sign that up as, as um, individuals or maybe a group of individuals from a destination. Then we have the master classes. So these can either be open enrollment or can be run specifically for a destination. Or we've got some NTOs who, who are rolling this out for a group of destinations in their country. At the moment, we're starting off with four courses. There will be other courses, but we're starting off with four courses. And these courses are developed in partnership and some just by the GDS with uh, our faculty. So um, I won't explain these too much because our, some of our guests are gonna share more about that. So we have impact strategy and measurement, which has been led by Geneviève Leclerc and Meet for Impact. And Geneviève is gonna explain that to us and how you create, manage and measure impact in your destination. We've got planning for recovery and resilience, obviously a key thing right now. So that has been uh, uh, co-created and, and, and built on something that Travel Foundation have um, developed before. So really excited that Graham's gonna share about that next. Then storytelling for regeneration, which is what Melissa will share next. How do we tell the stories that inspire people and get them into action to create the change? And then lastly is the event, regenerative event management. So this builds up off a, a piece of work that I did last year with Marriott and IMEX uh, and a white paper and a framework we created called, called Hanawa. So this is really how do we rethink event management to create and catalyze change. So four deep dive programs, each masterclass is four units, so typically over four weeks. Um, and there's normally a, um, a, a, a important project that has to be developed. So again, some of these are open enrollment. So as individuals, you can sign up. And some of these are like the impact strategy measurement by its concept is best delivered in a destination. It could be just a DMO or it could be the DMO with the convention center, with the city, with the hotel association or whatever. So uh, you'll hear more about that later. So really, really exciting things. And we're gonna have, have more of this. And what I love about the concept here is that we, we didn't want to be, you know, kind of the gurus on stage that create everything. There's, there's amazing learning and thoughts and knowledge out there in the market. What we really wanted to do with the Academy is create a platform to help others bring their brilliant knowledge and learning and frameworks to market uh, and then build up the processes and learning methodology and pedagogy to create really amazing learning experiences. So a lot of that is built around our learning management system. So after this, you're more than welcome to click on gds.earth slash academy and you can see a lot more about the pricing and the education and how it's structured and things like that. So really interesting uh, learning management systems here that bring a life this whole of this experience. Um, I will just quickly you know, go through this. We found out this morning, this is important. So um, we have uh, pricing here for the certificate, a launch rate and normal rates, there's early bird pricing. Um, I think what is important that uh, ECM and ECA members have a significant discounts of 200 euros off the, off the certificate and 100 off the master classes. So that's an overview here, I guess on that note, I'm gonna stop my screen sharing. And um, just something important, I'd like to invite to the stage Petra um, and uh, Sentil from ECA. Petra is the president of uh, European Cities Market. Both ECM and ECA are key strategic partners of the Academy and uh, people I've worked with for quite a long time. And um, this is much their baby as it is ours. So uh, I really welcome, welcome the two. So welcome, Petra. Welcome, Sentil. Thank you. And hello to everyone.
from Ljubljana, Slovenia, actually. <laughs> so maybe ladies first, then Petra. I mean, you're you have an interesting role. Not only are you the president of European Cities Marketing, which is the association for European DMOs, you also run a DMO in Ljubljana, who's yes. had an amazing commitment to sustainability over the years. A real leader, I believe. Um, I'm interested to you know, get your view of just kind of what's happening at the moment. How how where is the market? Is it is it coming back in Europe and, and, and where does sustainability and regeneration sit in that recovery? Well, in a, I don't know, a lot of destinations awareness um, shift started already prior to crisis, but in the past year, we noticed that many destinations actually sharpened their focus on sustainability in many ways more consideration to locals. You also see behind me power of community and we strongly believe in that. Uh, and most of all, you know, to restart tourism on stronger, stronger foundations. Of course, we are on different levels. Uh, so that's why the, the you know, the, the uh, let's say the guidelines like the academy that we are launching today is one of the best tools possible to learn and to sharpen our focuses even more. So uh, we are now actually, I mean, COVID has accelerated all trends. Uh, luckily, we left behind the uh growth um uh imperative uh, you know behind us which is a which is a good news in all the bad ones but uh we did ecm did a survey last year among dmos and showed that 89 percent of dmos uh um uh, through the crisis uh they we believe that i mean majority of us believe that the the crisis will lead us Towards a more sustainable future, uh, much more than half of it, uh, half of us uh, find more purpose and relevance as uh, facilitators in our cities. So, yeah, sustainability is now on a roll, which is great. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic, and sensible. So, um, you obviously work on a global level, being responsible for leading uh, Eco Forward. Um, um, I'm interested to know your kind of viewpoint on this kind of recovery. Where is where is the sector right now around the world, and and how is sustainability fitting into event management? Thank you, Greg. Uh, hello to everybody. Uh, glad to see all of you here. I think it clearly showcases even the sessions we had in the morning and then now in the evening. What kind of interest shown by our, our industry worldwide, the business events industry? I think from an industry uh, reopening or reviving our business uh, guy. It's, it's a more structured and a stimulus approach. Each destination is uh, looking at moving forward with while doing safe uh, events, uh, following the health protocols. The best part, like I mentioned earlier, that the governments and the policymakers are being more convinced that our business events uh, or the meeting industry overall creates a stronger global uh, economic impact in their nations. So there are a lot of positivity around uh, yes, it's 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 a wider spectrum of countries worldwide. If you take each region, Africa, Latin America, North America, and of course Asia Pacific, it's at different paces. But I, I see that there is a continuous process, and then on a weekly basis, you see they are making a development process and really want to go into the next level of trying something smaller, steadily, and getting into the uh, opening, reopening event. Sustainability is is a key focus. I mean, we have been analyzing the RFPs coming. Uh, from our association community. Continuously, if you really see, sustainability is a fundamental pillar. So any destination who's bidding for it, even in, in spite of uh, the pandemic situation, uh, 22, 23, 24, any bids you come uh, sort of, you need to work on in the future. For ECOM members, it's vital that your focus has to be keen as a destination, if you're keen to win that bid. So yeah, absolutely. And one of the things I see among many DMOs across uh, globally, that they have, they have started investing more on sustainability during COVID situation as well. So your marketing budgets are cut down, but uh, like Petra mentioned as well, you need to want to do a sustainable and a responsible tourism, you know. So the budgets gets more and more allocated into that segment as well. It's exciting, isn't it? And I think what's really exciting for the, for the events industry is not only a need, a requirement, moral responsibility to organize our events more sustainability, is the business opportunity, you know. The growth sectors of, of, of business today are in renewable technologies, they're in biotech, they're in green, green housing and green sustainable cities. 
those are the the mega events of tomorrow that are going to be like the cardiologies of today. So, so really exciting times for, for organizers to think about how, how they play a role in catalyzing the future. So, so Petra, I'm interested. So ECN has done some great work and we've done some great work on, on kind of sustainability initiatives before and some interesting research together. Um, you have a, a really great knowledge group. How do you see the, the academy you know, into the future. How does it fit for you guys? Why are you a partner? <laughs> <laughs> we are a partner because we know that we are, you, you guys, we, ICA and uh, Travel Foundations, and you have, everyone basically knows what we are doing. So it's, no, but seriously, we are, I mean, we've done great work before, but now is a perfect opportunity to, continue to build up our, our, the foundations that we already laid and to learn from each other and to basically build the community even higher. I mean, these are all big words, but it's it's actually the essence. Uh, GDS um, Academy is really completing well. Uh, for example, our work, the activities and projects of our sustainability knowledge group in um, supporting, positively contributing to the development of the DMOs of, tom DMOs of tomorrow, actually, or, tom or rather saying DMOs of today already, um, as well as, of course, the sustainable uh, urban tourism destinations and uh, the, um, seriously, due to immense complexity of the not only situation but also the theme we can only succeed if we work together and definitely learn uh, from each other so we're really really happy to join uh, forces today with uh, with uh, everyone who is in involved in uh, the academy and who has been working on that basically for years so it's we're all in really good hands Brilliant, brilliant. And since a similar question to you, but also a focus on, on talent, I kind of hear a lot of people talking about they're, they're worried they can't find the talent that, that they need today, and they're worried about having the talent for tomorrow in this ever-changing VUCA world. You know? So what's your view on that? Absolutely, guys. It's a big challenge. I know our industry had a, a constant brain drain in the last 15 or 16 months. We're losing people to other industries constantly due to the uncertainty around us due to a pandemic. But having said that also, so it's very vital that education is at the forefront. Reskilling is at the forefront as well. I think uh, that's that's the position of ECA as well. We have taken, uh, beginning from January this year, we went up to the ECA skills program, a uh, serious series of chapters and modules on in-depth on business events, uh, the future of business events. So it, it gives a learning to the existing resource and the future generation, which is entering into the business events. Uh, the GDS Academy definitely, uh, the, the, it's on sustainability, it definitely complements another segment of study uh, to our industry colleagues so that when they, when the reopening happens, when we get into the new business models in our industry, our industry is ready or, or, re, or, or they will relearn to push forward with the new types of business our clients are looking for. So I think, yeah, it, it's very fundamentally uh, important pillar so that we can service our members and get them ready to face the future post-pandemic situation. Brilliant, fantastic. Thank you, guys. Um, floor is open. Anyone would like to ask a question? Anything would like to share? Or um, we'll move on to the uh, other things. We'd like to create some space here. Okay. Mm -hmm. If not. Okay. It's Dave yeah, in Vancouver. Thanks. Yeah. Hey, just, just a quick question. What are your thoughts about how, what this movement is compared to the EIC, for example, the sustainability program within the EIC, the Events Industry Council? I would just want to get your thoughts on that. Good. Well, so, so some of us are very involved with EIC. We, you know, I was the president of the Green Meeting Industry Council to, and I kicked off the standards program all those years ago. So EIC has, has a, a really important role and have just come out with their new training. Um, and so we look at that training on the sustainable events as, as very important. For us, it's the kind of foundation level. It's, it builds on the standards. It's kind of pre-recorded or what we call asynchronous uh, learning experiences. And so we want to build on top of that. Our program is very much focused on destinations first, 
and then what destinations can offer to their supply chains. So it's a it's a channel, it's an offering for, for DMOs to offer to their thing. So, so one of those courses, one of the vertical masterclasses is on regenerative event management. And so that builds up beautifully on top of the EIC. I'm one of the faculty of the EIC program, so I think is is cloudier and maybe uh, some of the other people here on the team too. So uh, yes, yeah, so it links and builds on and that's really important to us. So just like Travel Foundation and others have got training, we're really looking to synergies. How do we complement? We don't want to compete. We want to fill the gaps and then make it a smoother process. Thank, thank you. That make, That's what I was thinking. That makes sense. Thanks. Yeah. And um, yeah, this is an adaptive process. We need to learn and work out how to do it as well. You know, as we come up and other things come along. Um, so yeah, good. Any other questions? Okay, well, get your, learn, your, your thinking hat on, please. Um, I'm gonna ask uh, one of our, our first partners. So uh, Graham, I would like you to come and join us. So Graham is uh, head of uh, strategic partnerships at the Travel Foundation. And uh, one of the things, you know, we started off as a meeting and events program. We came out to the project together with ECA um, that started many years ago in Scandinavia and came up with the index concept. And then over the last few years, people such as Petra and, and uh, Barcelona and other key destinations said, you know, this is great that some meetings and events focus, but it doesn't really work for us in the big picture. We need a holistic program that helps us out with, with leisure and tour leisure tourism focus as well. So we realized that we needed to build more partnerships and more collaborations. And so, um, Graham and I bumped into each other in a in a bar in the Azores, um, and over a beer we clicked uh, clicked with each other, and we started to plan some some ideas of what we could do together. So we've been on a lot, an interesting journey, and this is uh, it's great to see this. So welcome, Graham. So maybe you can tell us, Graham, a little bit about uh, what you have in store for us in the academy. Sorry, my internet connection just dropped, <laughs> dropped away for a second. That's so I've just connected. This is the problem with these uh, these types of events, isn't it? We're, we're sort of so used to it now, and people freezing and yeah. this sort of thing. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> thanks, um, thanks, guys. I mean, it's really great to be here. Um, and, and I was going to say, I mean, I think you know, for us at the Trail Foundation, we've we've always been you know really interested in the impact of tourism um, has on, on destinations. Um, with a particular focus on on, on communities, uh, on destination environments. So, so that's where our work has been really focused over the past 20 years or so um, on supporting destinations and also working very closely with private sector on trying to create a, a shared agenda for, for destinations. And um, I think, you know, we, we as, a, as, a, as a relatively small NGO, um, you know, we've had some really big successes. We've, we've published some really important research. Uh, we've done some really great work um, with, with destinations, but you know we need to collaborate with, with with others. We need to bring our expertise and our experience together with um, with that of, of of other organizations, and ultimately to try and scale um, uh, that, that learning. And so we're really excited to be part of um, this program and to be able to offer you this masterclass. Um, just to tell you a little bit about it, um, I've only got a couple of minutes to do so. Um, but when um, everyone started um, sort of last year talking about building back better, um, we, we did a couple of things. So the first was, um, see that logo there, we founded the uh, Future of Tourism Coalition, which set out uh, some, some goals for um, how tourism could and, and should look like uh, in the future. Um, but at a very practical level, we also um, developed a... Um, uh, an approach that destinations can use to make sure that um, their uh, recovery strategies, their recovery plans really um, focus on positive outcomes um, for, for the destination in terms of things like inclusivity, um, things like um, long-term economic resilience, uh, things like changing uh, market demands and expectations. So really focusing on, on helping destinations to Sort of stress test and uh, and improve 
um, uh, th their recovery plans against a range of, of, of uh, development goals. Um, so the idea is that it's a very practical um, approach, and we've you know, we've, we've really we've worked with um, quite a few destinations already in, in, in rolling this out. But we're we're sort of bringing it to the table, bringing um, also GDS's um, incredible um uh, expertise experience lots of best practice uh, from around the world lots of very practical um tools um and and um uh, uh, and applied learning exercises as well um so the idea really is that at the end of this course you will have um uh, the, the knowledge uh, the capacity the the examples to really be able to make sure that your recovery plan um, is very very robust so we've got a few um, things that you could expect to get um, from participating in this, and that, that is uh, making sure that your recovery plans are, are very relevant, that they're achievable um, uh, in, in both the short and the medium term, making sure you're collecting the right data and using um, that data to ensure that your plan is very evidence-based, um, making sure that um, the priorities are set correctly to help your tourism businesses not just survive but to, to, to thrive of course we know um, that many of you will have um, depleted resources at the moment so how do you utilize those in the best possible way uh, for the best possible outcomes uh, we also touch on marketing and promotional strategies how can we make sure that those uh, again align to that recovery strategy aligns to those outcomes for, the, uh, for, for your communities for your businesses um, we talk quite a lot about um, monitoring and measuring success obviously a lot of you are doing quite a lot of that already through um, your engagement with the, the GDS index uh, but how can that be again incorporated into uh, recovery planning um, and we also focus quite a lot on resilience as well so how can we make sure that we're um, ultimately building forward um, in, in, a, in a sense um, to, to make sure that um, our, our, our uh, tourism economies are, um, are, are strong um, and, and will be able to survive um, future challenges. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll stop there, um, conscious of the time, um, but um, we'd really obviously welcome any, any more questions about the programme. Um, and yeah, just to say once again, we're very delighted to be part of it. Thank you, Graham. That's wonderful. We're delighted that you're here with us as well. So uh, next we're going to go for a different part of the world from the UK through to, to Montreal and Canada. Uh, so, bonjour Genevieve, it's uh, wonderful that you're here. I'm delighted to hear a little bit more about uh, what, you, what you're bringing to the, to the party. Thanks, Guy. Um, hello, everyone. I know a few of you here. For those who don't know me, Genevieve Leclerc, uh, founder and CEO of Meet for Impact. We work with uh, destination management organizations in developing impact strategies. Um, I was in the garden before I was hoping to stay there. But uh, some workers started drilling into metal in the lane behind me and it <laughs> wasn't very respectful to you guys. So unfortunately, um, back in the house. Um, thank you. Hello, Petra, Santil, Graham, lovely, Melissa, lovely to be on, in this lineup with you. Um, and before I talk about the, um, the masterclass guy, I just want to shout out um you know to you and your wonderful team and your wonderful crew i know how much work has has gone behind this um we're absolutely thrilled to be on that ride with you but really kudos to you and the people that are working behind behind the scenes um i've had a privy i've been privy to knowing how hard they've been working in the last two weeks to take this off so why are we uh, presenting an impact masterclass as part of this, um, of this academy? While most of you will say, well, we've already got a sustainability strategy. So what's the added value of having an impact strategy? Um, so for us, having an impact strategy or you know, working with you on developing your impact muscle, as we call it, it means helping you develop the capacity and the capability to purposely leverage your economic activity, what you're currently doing, attracting events, attracting visitor economy, to generate fruitful legacies for your communities that you represent and that you serve, 
which will in turn and over time deliver positive outcomes and positive impacts on the economic, the um, environmental and the social level. So basically helping you develop beyond your sustainability strategy, beyond your recovery strategy, methods and processes to plan for impact, to plan for change and to evaluate how this change is gonna happen so that you can take responsibility and accountability for your efforts. Um, managing for impact means both mitigating the negative aspects of what we do and most of us are a bit more familiar with that part because a lot of the sustainability strategies has been to try to mitigate the negative impact of some of our activities. But it also means planning for amplifying the positive effects of what we do. And before we amplify it, we've got to understand what they are. We've got to understand how they get generated and we've got to measure it so we can report it and see our increase. So having an impact strategy really is, Guy, it's, it's taking sustainability, boosting it to 4.0 and developing a powerful engine to convert that sustainability strat strategy, your social, your economic, your environmental goals into true reg regeneration for communities. And we're also positioning it as a great advocacy tool because you gain the ability not only to talk about the positive outcomes of business events and the visitor economy, but to actually demonstrating that you're driving change and that you're driving change in line with the social and the economic development policies of your governments, of your municipalities and of your, your region. So this masterclass um, will have four modules. The first course really is an introduction to impact management and strategy. I think you, you will all agree that um, one of the first things that we've got to do is have common vocabulary so that we can understand what we're talking about and we can agree on the core concepts. Uh, we're also going to be touching on uh, what's an impact ecosystem. How do we develop our impact ecosystem? How do we turn our current collaborations and partnerships into an impact ecosystem so that we are gearing up for sustain for systemic change not just local change the second course is on the sdgs so using the sdgs as an impact framework how can you use the sdgs to develop your sustainability sustainability strategies in a way that they can register against global issues global efforts um, and report it because they're also a great reporting tool the third course um, is probably the most technical um, me measurement and reporting of impact. So in this course, we cover basics of impact measurement. Um, what's the difference between impact measurement and other KPIs? We learn how to build dashboards, develop indicators, and generally build how to build your data capacity because data capacity really is one of the biggest obstacles um, to implement imp to implementing impact strategies. Uh, we're also going to be presenting um, as a, as a uh, world first, the Be Impactful framework, um, the measurement framework that Meet for Impact has been developing over the last year. And the final module um, will really give DMO teams an opportunity to apply the skills that they've learned um, and take it to the next level, really create some action plans around impact. So we're really excited. Uh, one of the key challenge in these uh, in this course, obviously, um, Guy, is to how do we train individuals in a way that they become change makers, they enhance the, the capacity and the capability of their organization to transform their practices and in turn deliver positive outcomes for third party stakeholders, the residents, the communities, the entrepreneurs, um, the business events industry, and just generally anyone back in their community. So that's the program. Um, we hope to see many of you there. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, Genevieve. And um, I'm excited because we've been prototyping this work with, with a few destinations to together with my team and Genevieve's team. And we actually roll out the full course to Belfast next month where we've been working on their strategy. And uh, we're gonna now take that strategy that has a really good action plan has good visions and values and objectives. And we're now gonna take that to the next step with, with this program. And I really like that work where it's, you know, I don't think is a, this is a training program. I think this is, a, it is an accelerated innovation program. Um, so really exciting. Totally yeah. 
So good, good, good. And, um, uh, and you know, again, all of these courses will unlock stories and work that's done. So Jorge Madrid, nice to see you, Jorge. So he's been doing some great work. So we want to come and, and, and get Jorge to share the, the work they're doing around uh, legacy in Madrid and, and, and people in Copenhagen and in New Zealand and Sapporo and things like that. So, so really great. So once you've got a good impact strategy and a re really good vision for regeneration, you've got to tell a story, right? So uh, I feel very fortunate to have a, a resident storyteller in our team. So I'd like to introduce Melissa Bird. Melissa is 15 years working on with big brands on, on sustainability and regenerative brand stories. And she's a key part of the team now and working with us and destinations of around the world. So welcome, Melissa, from, from Cape Town. Thank you, Guy. And it's just so wonderful to be sharing this platform. I wanted to make you imagine that you were perhaps by the fireside, hence my sort of dim lighting and my uh, attempt to create atmosphere and imagine the glasses are clinking, there's music playing, we're walking around each other and we're talking about these extraordinary stories. Genevieve, I want to answer your question. How do we train the sector? Sentel, I want to respond to your positivity and the fact that you're seeing and hearing so much positivity. Petra, I want to answer your questions about the different levels that the sector happens to find itself in and say that perhaps the solution is in the story. I came across a fantastic quote by a very well-known English author called E.M. Forster, who speaks about how we've lived in fragments and his invitation is to live in fragments no longer, only connect. And if you think about how the sustainability movement has been over the last 15 years, it's been fragmented, it's been polarized, it's been competitive, and it's been very, very badly understood. So one of the first modules we look at is creating incredible context, making sure that everybody in your team, everybody in your stakeholder group has access to context. Some of us are at higher levels, others of us are still beginning this journey, but the most important thing we can do to upskill your staff, to create cohesion in your team, is to bring everybody into the same context. Thereafter, we look at the science and the behavioral science around creating campaigns with real impact. You have these incredible strategies. This work has been going on for so long and as we're seeing is amplifying. There is so much, Guy spoke about this being a change of considerable acceleration so we have to be able to hold a narrative that takes people on this journey. I've got one of the most incredible storytellers on the planet, Ed Gillespie, who had Greenpeace for Terra, I mean, a, a CV that is just astonishing, who will be creating this extraordinary context from which we will take the next steps. Not only that, there will be an opportunity to bring your strategies to this networking, co-creative thinking process. And we will look at how to create brand hierarchy and how to create hierarchies around the stories. You know, how do we make data beautiful? How do we take these incredible initiatives? How do we inspire behavior change? And more importantly, how do we activate the heart? because this is the whole principle of regeneration. We've, we've been in this really constrained, extremely negatively narrated situation, but there is hope. And the innovation comes through hope and the innovation comes through the blue sky thinking. So how do we do that? And now I'm starting to feel like an infomercial. <laughs> we will also coach you. So you will bring your strategy to us. You'll go away and you'll do some homework. There'll be lots of reading. There'll be lots of opportunities to share personal stories and see how we can bring this together into 
a truly regenerative uh, new experience because there's so much good happening out there and people are not hearing about it and it starts with you and it starts with your sector and it starts with your strategy becoming great stories thank you melissa wonderful <laughs> Inspired. I'm ready. I want to do that course. <laughs> yes, you do. Oh, and let me not forget to mention that it's suitable for all marketing professionals, but most importantly, I think it's suitable for your internal team so that they really get the opportunity to learn the context and live your strategy. So don't forget about the people in your team as much as it's about going out there and you know, building new brands and, and creating competitive advantages through, I mean, sustainability is actually creating such competitive innovation. And that's actually good fun. I think that's when grown ups start to play again. I mean, and it's interesting, isn't it? Because because I think one of the things we've noticed, you know, working with 72, 80 or whatever destinations around the world is that um, we often work with the comms teams, yeah? And, and yeah. these are typically very experienced comms professionals and the comms agencies, but a lot of them don't have the experience of, of communicating regeneration and sustainability. So we, we want to upskill those teams and, and give them new tips, tools and techniques to take their already brilliant knowledge to a whole nother level. So um, I think, again, that's a key part of regeneration, isn't it? How we evolve, recycle, renew ourselves, rejuvenate our own knowledge. Brilliant. So thank you very much, Melissa. That was great. Thank you uh, to the other guys. Um, the floor is open for any kind of questions from, from anyone, if anyone would like to ask anything um, or share anything. And it's the end. It's midweek. <laughs> so good. Hi, Kathy. Thank you for joining us as well. So that's nice. Yes. <laughs> Very interesting. I was just about to type a message into the chat. So I will just um, I will just say it. I really love the idea of catalyze uh, you know, to rephrase your opening words to re to catalyze a regenerative future through people. And I think that's what um, what your academy is, is, is actually intended to do to activate the power of people around regenerative tourism. So I'm, I'm very taken with the concept. I, I guess one question would be um, whether someone could take, you know, doing the entire four months at a time might be a heavy lift for mm. busy destination leaders. And I wondered if there would be potential to perhaps spreading the experience out over a period of time. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. And for those who don't know, Kathy, Kathy was, was head of um, Colorado State um, Tourism Organization. So knows a lot about this, this work. Um, yeah, I think, you know, we're launching this now. What would it look like in a year? Who knows? You guys will shape it, you'll tweak it, you'll criticize it, you'll come up with new ideas. That's the really exciting part of our, the way we work. We co-create. That's what we've done with the index and with the work we do. So um, maybe that's maybe that's something we need to think about. And that's really why we decided to do the long program to give that kind of, you know, almost, a, I would say a master's kind of program feel about it. But then to do the those deep dive courses, which are only really designed around a month's concentration of work. And so, um, I think you know you could pick a masterclass now when you have time you have you have a month now and then you could do another one in six months time so that's our initial thinking but I'm we're up for everything and this is this is what we're launching with now and there's many many things coming for the future we're already walk, working on a class now which is around uh, st well stakeholder engagement how we engage people in co-creating the tourism and events industries that we want in our cities that's called democracy. Uh, and that will be connected to a white paper that will be coming out at the end of the year. Um, yeah. So thank you, Kathy. Anyone else? Good. Okay, then. Um, I, I guess, you know, for me, um, 
Let me share a screen. Um, share disappeared. Great. So so a kind of like summing up here really it's um it's a thank you it's a thank you to everyone who's been part of this um i think uh, milda who joined the team in january to lead this has done a wonderful job uh, to bring in together her knowledge from various organizations and from her time in imex and, and bringing this dream that we had to reality so thank you Milda for your amazing work. Thank you to the partners for really coming for this. And thank you for all the destinations because if it wasn't for all the ideas and knowledge and inspiration we've had from everyone we work with, then this wouldn't be a reality. So you're officially invited to, to come and participate. Um, if any of you are not part of the, the GDS index, you're also invited to join that. That's live now. We're busy indexing. I think we index 70 something destinations this year. In the next couple of months and benchmark those so uh so good so thank you everyone thank you petra and uh and the and uh Central and the rest of the partners so i'll leave it there have a great day and uh, see you soon mm -hmm.